or I don't have a voice in Olympia. And so we're here to change that. I'm Marty McClendon, I'm running for lieutenant governor. I'm the Republican candidate for that. I'm gonna tell you a little bit of history about kind of who I am and why I'm running, but then kind of what I wanna do as your lieutenant governor, if given the chance. And then really a couple of the ideas as well, but really this race, this election for the national level and the local level, it really is about right and wrong, it's about restoring um, the way it's supposed to be, putting power back in the hands of the people, restoring it to the people. Government's gotten way too out of control and not do what it's supposed to do. It's only supposed to do what we tell it to do on our behalf. Now, I grew up in eastern Washington, Quincy, Wenatchee, and Grand Coulee Dam. I say that as my dad was a rancher and a, cow and a construction worker. My grandfather was a farmer. Um, if you look at eastern Washington, you have Black Island Dam, Rocky Ridge Dam, and Grand Coulee Dam. That's where our travels went. So every time we do a job, we moved. Grand Coulee is a huge town of over about 1,000 people. So my high school class about 95 kids. Uh, it's where I got Eagle Scout. Uh, my dad only had a few rules as a cowboy. He said, look, if you give your word, you keep it. You start something, you finish it. If you do anything at all, give 100%. You respect your elders, you love God, and pretty much that's it. Everything else is on your own. It's the way I was raised. So as an Eagle Scout, those were the same values about love, country, uh, honesty, trustworthiness. I went to the UW, I studied pre-med. While I was there, I got, thank you. They won day two. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm going to figure this year, hopefully. Uh, while I'm there, uh, there I got a job in the anesthesia. Uh, I work as an anesthesia technician. I work over every hospital in Seattle and the Beach Sound area. I say that only because the skills there, what we did, we got to be one of five that uh, could do what I could do um, while I was going to school. I, I, basically, when someone was in the cath lab and had a, a vessels that were dissect, they'd have to be in the OR within about 10 minutes. You have to get the patient, transfer them over, get lines in, get them intubated to sleep, about 10 to 12 minutes. And it was high stress, high adrenaline, and I loved it. Because that the idea was that thing slowed down for me. We have a job to do, let's get it done. And I have some coworkers that fall apart. I'm like, oh, and you know, we don't care. No, we have a job to do. Imagine a lieutenant governor can work with both sides and say, right, what's the most important thing to do at first? We have a job to do, let's get it done together and on time, right? So then I met my wife, she's been a nurse for 26 years. We had our son, and, and uh, when both of us were on call every other night and every other weekend, it was probably not a good thing for a family, so one of us had to leave. So I, I went into real estate, and the last 17 years I sold real estate all across the Puget Sound. Um, part of that is working with people, multiple people, getting things done, multiple entities, trying to come to a solution on, in, in, in time and on time that everybody's happy with, right? Win win solutions for everybody. Another skill set that transfers over to the tenant governor. Uh, in that part, though, I also manage nine offices, 150 different agents, doing all the training and teaching and business. So I own businesses as well. This is all that, that leadership, training, mentoring type of thing. The last three years, in addition to that, I pastored a church in New Carver called Family Church in New Carver. Why in the world would we do that? The idea was we wanted to be very intentional about family. We understand the breakdown of society, the breakdown of our government, is the breakdown of family. If we, can, if we can fight for families, we can restore our community. We can, we can restore our community in our state and our nation. And so we have, also, we open up and have free lunch every Sunday for the, the public. The idea is families engaging. The last two years, I've been on the radio in Seattle. In addition to those things, we have a radio program called Eyes on Washington. It's a, it's a political station um, from 5 to 6 p.m., but we've talked, it's a social and political commentary from a Christian perspective program. So we've ever, everything from smart meters to politics to religion on there, talking about how we need, <laughs> as people, to help our government. And our main theme at the end of every show, no matter we're talking about politics or not, is that every man, woman, and child has a God-given talent or skill or ability that you need to be engaged in their community to make the community better, make the state better. And yet we oftentimes we're not asking them to get involved. Okay? Um, I have three kids, my oldest is 19, my middle is 14, my youngest is 13. Well, we faith and grace. We have a long story there, but my son had leukemia twice, my daughter's a donor, it's a great story for some other time. But it's it makes us who we are. Now when it comes to Lieutenant Governor, what we know that Lieutenant Governor Bill's Amber Bill and Bill's gone, who's the governor. You know that Lieutenant Governor resides over the Senate. Right there, bringing both sides together. I understand if we just go from Democrat to Republican or vice versa in that regard, and just change the jerseys to do the same thing, we will do nothing. We've got to change the culture of government once again, where there's civility, where there's honor. I understand that, one minute, 